Welcome into a brand new edition of the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. Uh, we are got sh- a short staff today. D is uh, away, so Cisco's handling everything. You a little bit nervous, see? Yeah, I think he's nervous. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's getting a little workout. He's going from one side of the studio to the other side of the studio. Uh, but he's doing a good job, though. Yeah. Good job. Good job. He's got his little tight but, little but, pants on. I was going to say, I think he'll be fine. I think those shorts look a little looser he's than got, usual. He's got his P- <laughs> PF flyers on, his shoes. Oh, wow. That, those are pretty nice shoes. They look like they're not, they like Air Jordans, but not really. They look like Air Jordans. <laughs> Air, Air Jurgens. Jurgens. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. man, so he's all by himself, and he's got to deal with all this crap. Yeah, we already started on you. Yeah, that's only fair. You know, you're appreciated when people are picking on you. That's 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 how you know. That's so Tim has been going through life like that. Right? Yeah, exactly. that's right. But he has a kill button. I didn't have one. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. He does a great job, though. This, you know, all all jokes aside, these kids do a good job, and and uh, Cisco never complains. You know, even though we talk about his clothes and. You know, his pants being too tight and, you know, the Stockton's on. But the guy, you know, he comes to work every day with a smile on his face. Absolutely. And that great training, running things at DePaul Radio. DePaul, yeah. yeah He's so, moving up big time at DePaul now. Yeah, so we appreciate him. And uh, D will be back as soon as he can. But we'll talk a little about the NBA Finals that finally get finally. started on Thursday. Of course, you guys went through that all the time. You finish off teams and have the long break. How tough is that? to keep your edge when you're waiting for this big series. to Yeah, come. it's really tough because, you know, there, there's, I mean, if you, when we were winning, we were putting teams away early in yeah. all the series. So we were always getting breaks. And the thing that helped, it helped guys like Bill Carwright, Paxson, the older guys get a little bit more rest. You know, the younger guys, we get a little bit more restless. You know, there's a lot of free time. So younger guys, you know, can get themselves in trouble, you know, being out doing some things they don't want to do. So we we're always wanting to get the series on and get it started. Plus, the earlier it gets started, you know, the longer the party goes in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a story about uh, Pat Riley had like a training camp, boot camp? Oh, and, hell. And when, when Magic got hurt, <laughs> when, they, when they lost to Detroit? Let me tell you something. Pat Riley. Oh, Lord have mercy. I have nightmares about Pat Riley. I'm telling you. <laughs> I remember, listen, we used to we used to play the Knicks. And uh, after we played, it would always be at the end of the season, last game of the year, we play the Knicks, whether it be at home or the road. And I remember talking to Charles Oakley, you know, you know, talking to him like, hey, well, you know, you guys, you guys, good luck in the playoffs, whatever. He's like, yeah, we're getting ready to go back to two days. We're going to South Carolina. They oh, were going to fly man. to South Carolina and have two days and get ready for the season, for the playoffs. And I thought that was the craziest thing, you know. And then I played for Pat his first year in Miami. And we went back to two days, and we were playing the 72 and 10 Bulls. And I'm like, why the hell are we going to go two oh, days? No. We got no shot in hell yeah. to beat them. <laughs> Not one game. Because we had just beat them like a week ago. So we were one of their their 10 losses. That's when Rex Chapman went off and they had like a 40-some point game. Um, but there was no chance we were going to beat them in the playoffs. And we went back to a two-a-day. And, you know, we had some, we had some incidents in practice. Um, you know, Danny Shays, um, our aging center, big guy. Uh, rookie Kurt Thomas kind of shattered his face in the in the in a in a fight before the series, which kind of hurt us too. Um, you know, so a lot of things happen. You know, a lot of animosity, especially in like past teams, because you have to practice so hard during the year. You don't have a lot of days off. You know, I, I think I can count like maybe on two hands, we might have had eight days off the whole year. You know, so it's a very grueling process, and there's a lot of anger at the end of the year. Guys are like ticked off and short fuse, and that was one that you know, Kurt Thomas, who was a rookie at the time from TCU, who was a good friend of mine, who was my rookie when I was in Miami. Uh, man, gave a two piece to Danny Shays, and it wasn't pretty. Oh, Kurt like Thomas, kinda, it was bad like, dude. Yeah, it was kind of like Rudy Tom Donovich type thing. Ooh. It was yeah, it was really bad, and uh, that kind of that kind of we went into the playoffs not full strength. Yeah, well. well we, I was gonna say, what, what, what happened uh, after that? You just brought up uh, Rex Chapman. What happened after he uh, led Jordan up? What was what happened that next game? Well, I, and I told Rex <laughs> this because I've seen it so many times. You know, Jordan always destroys guys' careers after they have a good game against them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, go back and look at LeBradford Smith, you know, the, the phenom from Louisville. was playing for the Wizards or the Bullets at the time. And he came in and had a great game against Michael in at the, uh, at the old stadium. I mean, he he was going to work. I think he had like thirty six points, and you know, Michael was his idol. Like all these young kids, Michael was every one of these young kids' idol. And so, and he wasn't talking trash. He wasn't talking trash. MJ, he wasn't. You know, every time he scored, he wasn't looking at him. He's just playing. You know, but MJ was so mad, like he, he just couldn't <laughs> guard him that night. You know, sometimes some nights it's like that. Some guys yeah. just have it on. He had it on. And the good thing about the NBA back in those days, we played back to back games. So 
we flew from Chicago to Washington the very next night to play them again. And man, I, you talking about it? I, I believe that game destroyed the Bradford Smith. Yeah, you never heard about him. I, I, I mean, anybody who was there saw that. It was, it was a dismantling, of just a mental, physical dismantling of a person's, just, just their whole body, just their soul snatched out from them. MJ goes on a tear in the first quarter. I'll never forget this. I mean, he outscored the Wizards by himself. It was like Michael 24, the Wizards 10, you know, and he just kept rolling. And he was, every time he got the ball, just attack LeBrad for Smith, attack the double team. So, <laughs> so Phil pulls him out and uh, pulls him out of the game, you know, in the third quarter. MJ's got, let's say he has like 49 or something, you know, it's a crazy number. And um, so Phil goes, all right, Michael, that's it. You proved your point, you know. So Michael, you should see LeBrad for Smith's eyes. I mean, he thought he wanted to cry, dude. He felt so bad for him. I just want to go there and say, come here, man. Let me give you a hug. Come here, man. You know, that's how bad it was. I mean, it was just yeah. a destruction of a kid's confidence. And so Michael walked by him and said, you know, it took, it took you, you know, four quarters to get what you got on me. It, it took me two and a half quarters to get what I did on you. And he went in and sat down, and it was like, oh. <laughs> and you never heard from the Bradford Smith again. <laughs> now, the Rex Chapman story. Rex, Rex was talking trash. Rex was talking trash because, you know, he that's how Rex is. Rex is a cold white boy, for real. Like, people don't know about Rex Chapman. You better, right? That's a cold white boy. He could shoot it. He could dunk. He was athletic. And he's hung around. Rex grew up with, you know, African-Americans. So he's played, you know, on all kind of courts, you know, Rucker. All, so he's... He got a little little thug in him, you know. So he's talking trash. He's he's hitting jumpers. And Rex is one of these shooters, man. Beautiful stroke. And he could be off balance. It didn't matter. He's falling away. And he was hitting everything he threw up. And uh, we were running single double screens against him. And MJ could, you know, they, they were, we were getting really good picks on him. And Rex is getting just one inch. All he needs is just a little inch. Boom, bam, just knocking him down. So after the game, Rex all celebrating everything, you know. Uh, so I, I told when he's, his locks are next to mine. I said, Rex, let me just tell you something, man. I've seen this movie before. I said, next time Michael plays, he's going to kill you. And so Rex goes, yeah, he can try. I said, okay, Rex. <laughs> okay, Rex. Okay, Rex. So we play him in the playoff game, and MJ just destroyed him for, like, the whole series. Like, he couldn't get his shot off. Um, and that's the one thing about Michael that, that you see these stars don't have in their repertoire. Kobe had it, you know, where they want to destroy you mentally and physically. Well, wasn't there a kidney punch or something involved? Who was there like a kidney punch or something involved? I don't remember. I, I don't I think, I think you do. I don't remember that. I don't, I, all I'm gonna say, all, all I'm gonna say okay. is, all I'm gonna say is when you when you have a guy like that who not only is a force on the offensive end but is also a force on the defensive end and takes defense very seriously and wants to embarrass you in every aspect, you know, and that's Michael and Kobe. You don't really see that. You know, in this in this generation of game players, they don't have that same kind of tenacity. They might have it on the offensive end. You know, you see Jason Tatum, who's a, who's a deadly scorer on the offensive end, but he doesn't play defense like that. You know, Jalen Brown is probably is a better defensive player than Tatum is, but Tatum's a better offensive player. Um, you know, you that's these guys who are in the finals right now, Mark. You're going to see, you know, guys have stepped their game up. You know, on the defensive, and that's the reason why the Mavericks are here. Their their numbers have improved since they made those trades. They they become one of the best defensive teams in the second half of the season. That's one of the reasons why they're there. Boston has you know always been a very you know very good defensive team, always in the top ten on the Eastern Conference. So the best defensive team is going to win this series. But I I got Mavericks winning. Yeah, you, you made that prediction last week. I was going right. to see if you were sticking. Guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are wondering how this layoff is going to affect each team. And obviously, Boston is going to get Porzingis back. He hasn't played since April 29th. Rust. But I, I, Rust. I think what's really going to help Dallas is Luka was was kind of running on fumes. Yeah. He gets a week to re-energize. I'm sure his knees are going to be feeling better. And Luka's a bad man. Well, a couple of beers. You know, um, you know, behind Cheers the scenes, behind the scenes. Um, yeah, you know what? Listen, when you get to this point, this is where he's want to be. This is where he is want to be at his whole career. This is what this is what separates, you know, star players, superstar players from great players is this stage here. Kyrie's been here. He's won a championship. He's been one of the reasons why they won a championship. And now you got Luka here, the biggest stage. Everybody's going to be watching. And it's going to be interesting to see how he performs the first couple of games, because you go back to the series before they played uh, Minnesota, he struggled the first couple of games, and it was really Kyrie, you know, trying to bail him out a little bit. But I, I think he's in for a big, big series. I think 
the reason why I'm giving the Mavericks the edge is because they're bigs. You know, you're you're you know they're athletic. They're they're you know they play above the rim. You got to spend so much time worrying about Luca and Kyrie who could break the defense down and make these unbelievable passes. Boston's defensive game plan is going to have to be tight. You're you're really going to have to be focused, which they will be. You're going to have to take away something, I and mean, you're going to have to give up something. You're going to take away Luca. Or are you going to give Gafford and Lively, you know, dives to the rim and get easy buckets all night? So you've got to take away something from, you know, from the Mavericks and force them to do other things they're not comfortable doing. The Kyrie thing has been fascinating. He played great basketball throughout the playoffs, especially in the Western Conference Finals. And now all of a sudden, they've changed the whole narrative about him. Remember a few weeks, years ago, the guy was a joke. The earth yeah. is flat. Yeah. And, you know, all of the crazy things he was saying, forcing himself off of this team, going to that team. Walking around with incense, yeah. you know, and, and the Native Americans. And now, oh, yeah. now all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, wow, Kyrie is one of the talent, most talented players ever. LeBron, the other day on his podcast, said that, that he regrets the fact that he's not playing with him anymore because he's the most gifted player he ever played with. Well, that's why he should have been fired as a GM a long time ago. He should never got to this point as the Lakers that he's a GM because he makes these decisions. Listen, you could tell that kid was talented when he came in this yeah. league. There's a reason why he was a number one pick. The kid can play, and he only played like eight games at Duke. But there was, you know, people knew that this kid was something special. And when it just took him some years to mature. Now, the reason why Dallas got him because people he couldn't you know people couldn't give him away fast enough. Right. You know this is a, this is one of the most elite point guards in the league, and nobody wanted him. There's teams could have had him, and nobody wanted him because of his past and what happened in Brooklyn, what happened in Boston, and it seemed like it was everywhere he was going there was a problem, and so teams get a little afraid of that kind of stuff. But if I'm a GM, I'm sorry, I'm taking this is the generational talent. There's certain guys that you say. Yeah, but he is a freaking stud. We can get him in here, get him, you know, in a situation where he can help us win. We're going to do that. Marginal players, let him go. Uh, we don't have time for that. But superstar players, man, superstar players are mercurial. They have this diva complex. You have to make a choice to deal with them or let someone else deal with them, and then they find themselves in the finals like the Mavericks there. Think of how many teams passed on Kyrie Irving, you know, this past summer, and look at him now. Yeah, I think Kyrie's lost 10 straight to the Celtics, and he's going to walk into the Garden. It's going to be interesting to see how he reacts. He, he made a sound like in his news conference, so it doesn't matter. That's ancient history. This is a whole new situation. We're playing in the finals. We'll see if the fans can get under his skin. If he oh, he's going to get booed. Start. Yeah. He's going to get booed mercifully. I mean, Boston fans boo everybody anyway, uh, but he's going to get a little extra dose from them. And, you know, the thing I think about him is I think he's at a point in his career now where he understands, and maybe this happened in Dallas. Maybe he got a better understanding of being around Jason Kidd and Mark Cuban and that organization because I've heard from a lot of people who, you know, especially like, you know, people who played in there, people who worked there. It's a great place for players to go, you know, especially players who have a little history of being a little bit, you know, a little bit sideways a little bit. They get in and they thrive in those situations, you know. Uh, Cuban makes it a very, very entertaining place for players to come. You go in their locker room, it's first class. Their plane is first class. We borrowed their plane one year in the preseason, and we almost went down. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we almost went down, baby. I'll go blue, baby. But but the plane was unfreaking believable. Yeah. Like I was like, oh my god, if this right here would get a player to go to Dallas. And you know, you listen to Derrick Jones Jr. You know, he has a little pre now. How many times do you seen Derrick Jones Jr. in a press conference? Okay. He has excelled in the roles that Jason Kidd has put him in. And that's one of the things about when you look at coaches who played the game, especially guys like Jason Kidd, who's played at the highest level, he understands as a point guard, as a point guard, point guard mentality, there's a place for everybody. There's a guy, this is my lob guy. I'm going to put him in situations where he's going to get his lobs. This is a guy who runs the court. I can pitch the ball ahead, fast break. Yeah. Okay, he understands that. They found a role for him and Gafford. You know, we Two X bulls <laughs> we gotta, uh, we gotta and, and just listening to you know, just listening to Derrick Jones Jr. He took less money to go because I've always been a Derrick Jones Jr. fan. I just thought he was played wrong here. You know, I'm not a coach, and but I know talent, and I just and he thought, had a player option to come back. Yeah, and he took less, less money. money yeah. And he sat on the market all the way up until like August before he knew where he was going. And then Jason Kidd called him, and and that you know the rest is history. But this is a guy. You know, we're playing him at the five spot. He's not a center. 
You know, you got to play him in his now. He's got to, he's a guy that can guard anybody on the floor. So that reason alone, he should be on the floor. Okay. Whether you play him at the three, the four, uh, or the two, you put him out there and you say, I need you to stop him. I need right. you. And that's what Dallas is using him for. They don't care what, what number position number he is on the offensive end. Don't worry about that. But we need you to guard Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. And they can, it's, it's almost like having a guard dog, sick him, go get him. And that's what they use him. And he's throw, he's really thrived in that role. And then they want to play fast because Luca and Kyrie push the ball. He runs, they get the ball to the rim. He's dunking it. And he's doing all the things that we saw him do here, but he's just much more effective there. And last year, there was a lot of controversy. Dallas tanked late in the year because they would only keep their pick if it was in the top 10. And so they intentionally lost the last three games of the year. Luca was pissed. They ended up getting Derek Lively out of that. Smart move. <laughs> and now they've got the two headed center with Lively and Gafford. For lobs from Kyrie Swarmu. and and Luca, and that's that's been such a great weapon for them in these playoffs. Well, and, and the thing that Dallas has done right now is is they you know when they brought Kyrie, they said okay, we knew Luca needed a star player to be able to take some pressure off of him. You can't just do it alone. You had Jalen Brunson there that really helped him get pretty far, and they hadn't recovered since until they went out and got Kyrie Irving. So now you put Kyrie there, you got two stars next. Those two had a hard time playing with each other last year. They had a hard time trying to figure out where you want the ball, where I want the ball, who's going to hand the ball, crunch time. This year they figured it out. They understand each other's game. They have a whole game. training camp, too. Yes, they, yeah. Yeah, and they understand each other's game. So they like they don't have to argue who's going to take the last shot. They know. They know. It's just the flow of the game. Who has the ball in their hands, go get it. You know what I'm saying? So now you got that part of it done. Now you go out and you build around Luka. You go out and get shooters. You know, they got shooters. They've got these two bigs that cause all kind of havoc diving to the rim. And they're not shooting threes. The bigs are not shooting threes. You don't see Lively or Gaffer shooting threes. They go to the rim with reckless abandon. And when you try to double Kyrie or you try to double Luca or try to double show and try to get back, by the time you get back and recover, they're shooting down the lane and they're throwing the ball off the rim. They're not getting charges. They're not running over anybody. They're just going the ball, point the ball up there, throw it up there, I'll go get it. All right, so Stacy's got the Mavericks. Whispers who you got in the finals. I like the Mavericks too, and I think Lively's a huge factor in that. I think he's a critical factor. Um so yeah, I'm going with them too, and 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 the Celtics with their history of being a letdown team, it's, I can see it happening again. Yeah, a lot of people thought they'd win it in 22 against Golden State. I don't, I still don't to this day don't know how Golden State won a title. I mean, they were running on fumes, but the, somehow yeah. they beat the Celtics and, and and got that fourth championship for that group. Yeah, with that too. Well, they had those injuries too, but you can't. Uh, yeah, we, we've yeah. heard enough well, about I'll that. From I'll, I'll go with the Celtics in this series. Wow. I, I, I like their depth. You know, they they got a great starting five now. Horford will come off the bench with uh, Porzingis. Here, here's the problem with this. Here's the problem with this. Okay, Porzingis has been out a long time. Yep. Okay. Mm. What is his role now coming back? That's the that's the question that you have to ask yourself. You, he's just not going to plug right back in and go. Okay, you're going to play the way you played before you went out. Right. Now, in his mind, he is. He's going to go out there and shoot threes. He, he's going to have no rhythm. That would he, be he my... He focus on defense. Yes, man. that would be, be my... Blocker, that, yeah, that would be my biggest concern yeah. with him is, is he going to mess up their offensive rhythm since he's been out? Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, their coaching staff's going to have to figure that out because, you know, this guy's been out a long time. And, you know, he's and he's injury prone. Like, he may not even finish the series. I mean, he's liable to... You know, going and slip on some soap in the shower or something. Like the guy's always hurt. I mean, he can never. I'm serious. Like he's always hurt. You look at his record over the last four or five years. He he misses a lot of games, and it's got to be a concern going into the championship series because now all of a sudden we get past the Eastern Conference Finals where we didn't need you. Okay, uh, now you want to show up for the finals and like I want to get to the finals. I want to play. Now you're miraculously healthy. <laughs> yeah, they're doing push ups and sit ups. And you're ready to go out there and play. Well, they asked him today if he was 100. percent He goes, I don't know. We'll see. You yeah, know? see, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> oh, I don't need if I if I if I'm the coach, I'm like, uh, you know what, big fella, you just, <laughs> we're gonna we're glad you're back, and we're gonna use you if we can. Okay, there's right here. Yeah. Know if he's 100. percent If he intends on playing in game one, good question. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> this is the plan right now. But again, he's got that same injury Giannis had, and Giannis never came back. And you know, you know, Giannis is a fraud. Giannis is a fraud. Giannis, oh, the yeah, Giannis is out there playing for Greece right now. Mm -hmm. Come on, Giannis. You're right about Come that. Come on, Giannis. Giannis. And they're not going to qualify anyway. He's playing in a qualifier. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Come so on, Giannis. He's risking getting hurt. Giannis. For a team has no oh, chance to get to Paris. Giannis, you got no chance. <laughs> Giannis. 
You didn't play for your team in the playoffs. They would have won if you would have played. But his brothers will be there. That's what it's all about. Hanging out with his brothers. Well, you know what? Listen, you're going to go down with your brothers. You're going down with <laughs> the, little, the little paddle boat. is going to sink because Greece has got no chance. They're not qualifying. Yeah. And, and, I mean, what are you playing for? Yeah. You're playing for nothing. Listen, you couldn't show up to play for your team when they needed you the most. See, this is why I get mad if I'm an NBA team. If I'm the owner of Milwaukee right now, yeah. and I'm sitting there seeing them out there running sprints and running around looking healthy, and I'm thinking, okay, just you know, a few weeks ago, <laughs> you couldn't even walk when yeah. we needed you. Yeah. But I, you now you're out here dunking on people, yelling and screaming. Oh, man, hail to the no. We got to have some kind of stipulation in there, man. Well, speaking about NBA craziness, uh, I'm sure that everyone who's listening and watching saw the uh, Michael Carter Williams sound from last week. We were <laughs> talking about the most dysfunctional locker room he was ever in. It was with the uh, Bulls. That was the three <laughs> alphas year, and and Jimmy was uh, was not a big fan of Fred Hoiberg. You know, saying you were soft, and and you know, it, it, so according to the what Michael Carter Williams said, he he told. Fred told him, you know, fuck you. And yeah. he was like, fuck me now. What are you, yeah, talking you, about? you asked me, you asked my opinion. <laughs> now you, you say, fuck me. Okay. Let me tell you something, America. I was, I, I, I saw a lot of that there. Yeah. I saw a lot of that. And let me tell you something. I love Jimmy Butler more than anybody. Jimmy's my guy. <laughs> I gave him his nickname, Jimmy G Buckets. I give him all that. And, you know, a lot of people wanted to, you know, get on the Bulls. It was the Bulls that pushed Jimmy away. Jimmy started to become a diva here. OK, people don't know that. And it started when Derrick Rose was here. You know, everybody want to blame Derrick Rose. You know, Derrick Rose doesn't want to show up. Derrick Rose can't win, wants to see his kids graduate, all that stuff. And they, and they really they, they threw a lot of trash on Derrick Rose. But behind the scenes, you know, Derrick Rose was constantly in Jimmy's corner, constantly. You know, when he got comeback player of the year, bought him a nice diamond watch. He didn't want no publicity, he didn't ask, you know, cameras to follow him in, see him giving him. Everything was on the down low. And, you know, Jimmy started that, you know, guys need to come to practice. Guys need to work. I'm the hardest worker here. And you can start to see a shift in his personality, you know. And, it, it, you know, he played hard. I give him all that. And he, and he made himself an all-star caliber player. But there was things behind the scenes with that going on. He, like, he'd have his own trainer in there. The team's warming up on one end of the court. He's on the other end of the court warming up, um, you know, uh, wanting to fly out and do commercials when, you know, the team is flying out as a team somewhere. He wants to fly out on a, on a private jet. And just these little bitty things that, you know, you go, wow, I never thought I'd see that from him because he's such he was such a humble kid. And then all of a sudden, you know, fame kind of changes people. We've seen it with Giannis. Giannis is not the same humble, no. like, you know, no. I love Milwaukee. I'm going to stay here. I'm, I'm, Milwaukee's my favorite place. He, now, now he's like, you know, if you don't get people here, I'm leaving. You know, you don't sign my brothers and, and get my mom and my dad here, I'm leaving. You know, all that kind of, and it's like, you, you never saw that coming from him. You know, you never saw that coming with Jimmy. And everywhere Jimmy's went, now st stories are coming out. You know, Michael Carter Williams telling about those stories, um, you know, but you hear what, what Jimmy did in Minnesota and what he did in Philadelphia. And now you're starting to hear some stuff in Miami, you know. Yeah, if he doesn't get his extension, it's going to get ugly. Well, you know what? Pat Roddy's like, listen, this dude playing 60 games a year. Yeah. I'm going to pay this dude $200 million yeah. at 30, what is Jimmy, 34? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Cisco is 34, 35. 34. He's looking it up. He's looking it up. But, but I, think he's, I think he's a 34, 35. Did you think that was, uh, they, they used to say it was a D Wade effect when. Uh, 34. 34. Yeah. Good job, Cisco. The D Wade effect, because uh, that's who taught him to be a diva. And the funny thing about that is, is that, you know, D Wade wasn't like that in Miami. You know, because Pat Riley rules that with an iron fist. And, and Spolstra is a disciple from Pat Riley. He rules with, with an iron fist. So D. Wade wasn't doing that here. I think what happened was D. Wade saw the coaching staff here was not, you know, they, they I don't want to call them soft, because uh, that's a tough word to call, you know, a grown man. So <laughs> well, hey, Fred is a nice guy. Yeah, Fred is a nice that's guy. Not, it's like, okay, it's like, you know. it's like I, I liken it to, <laughs> When you were in high school and you had a uh, you had a the substitute come in, substitute doesn't know you, doesn't know you're yeah, not allowed yeah. to chew gum, doesn't know you know knows that they don't know that you're not allowed to leave the classroom to go to the bathroom. But now you say, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. Excuse me, can I? I'm chewing gum. I'm talking, sending notes. You're doing all this stuff to a substitute that you wouldn't do to your regular teacher. And when you a personality like Fred who is tries to treat you like a pro. You know, like, you guys should know these things. I, I shouldn't have to do this or, or reprimand you like a child. And that's just not Fred's personality. And guys, and guys saw that. Yeah. Guys saw that he was, you know, a nice guy, and they, they took advantage of that. 
Yeah, we're putting that team together with Jimmy, Rondo, and Wade. That is a recipe for <laughs> disaster. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. Out, out of the <laughs> out of the two out of the three, Rondo was the best out yeah. of the three. Because he wanted to be a coach. I'm gonna tell yeah. you something. I'm gonna tell you something. When I, I when we had that's we had a young Bobby Portis. You know, we had some really young kids at that time that were here on this on this roster, and the young players hated the uh, hated the older players, right. except for Rondo. Was McDermott still here and Denzel Valentine? I think, yeah, they were all yeah Denzel here. Uh, yeah, there was there was Bobby. I think Miritich was still here. Yeah, Miritich. Um, yeah, they had a lot. Campaign. Of, who was a campaign here too? I don't think campaign was here. Not yet. No, uh, because he we traded. We traded McDermott, McDermott for, him. for Oh, that's right, right, right. So we have some young players here, but the young players did not like the veteran leadership of Jimmy and, and, and Dwayne Wade. And they made a lot of comments about it when they were in the press and people were like, wow, is this what's just going on? And, um, but at the, at the same time, Dwayne Wade's a hall of famer at the end of the day. He, you know, he was coming here, you know, to this is his last, uh, but you got, you got like 60% of Dwayne Wade when he was here. Yeah. Well, he might've got less than that. Yeah. Cause he was not a healthy every all. now and again. He'd have you, a saw, you see that Hall yeah, of Famer, yeah, but yeah. very infrequently. Yeah, it was it was like once every eight games or yeah, something. Yeah. Um, but you know that's expected. I mean, we we tend to sometimes get aging stars. Like you know we when we when we got Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace was the <laughs> defensive player of the year, and then we got him here. He just was the shell of himself. He wasn't the Ben Wallace we right. saw. You yeah. know Rip Hamilton. You know Rip Hamilton. You know in Detroit, the running for days. You know boom boom boom. We get Rip Hamilton. He's he's down at the end of his career. He has injuries. He misses a lot of games. So you know we we've had these guys. You know Dwayne Wade was no different. He came in here. You know and he you know there'd be games where he'd be oh there goes David. okay he's kicking in now yeah. and there'd be other games you're like mm, yeah this might be his last year here right and jimmy followed him and i i thought the role of, of Dwayne way would be more of showing jimmy how to be a leader that's what i thought they brought him here i think that's what they brought him here they for. hoped yeah. yeah yeah that was the goal of bringing him here is to show jimmy now because derrick rose is not here you know uh joe keem is not playing now so now it's your team so you bring in a, a, a hall of fame player like Dwayne wade who's from chicago who can now teach Jimmy, show Jimmy, pull him to the side and say, no, don't do this. You know, you can't be doing things on your own over here. You got to be part of the team. You know, you can't disrespect the coach. You got to, no matter what, you don't, you may not like what the coach said, but he's still your coach, you know? And what Fred should have did, I think Fred, I would have done. This is what Stace King would have done, okay? Me and Norm Van Leer are on the same boat on this one. <laughs> I'd have been like, right, we need to clear the locker room. We need to clear the locker room. I mean, me and Jimmy, we need to have a personal talk. I cleared the locker room. And I said, all right, Jimmy, here's the rules. I'm going to turn the lights off, and we're going to throw till we can't throw no more. The first one to walk out here wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely old school. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, if you listen, I, when I coached in the CBA, I had a dude, I took a dude out of the game, Mark. I took a guy out of the game. I'm standing up, right? And I was calling a play. <laughs> this is crazy. I stand up, calling a play. The kid's like 6'11. He's walking out, and he chucks me. As I'm in the, I'm like, I'm out here talking, like, hey, get over here, back slap, watch that back cut. You thought you were Caitlin yeah. Clark. No, this dude, this dude, like, this dude, I mean, he literally, boom, and chucked me. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh. I was like, oh, did this motherfucker just chuck me? <laughs> I, I forgot I was a coach. So yeah. I was like, I, oh, man. So Dennis Hobson was my assistant coach. So Dennis came, I, I started to go over there, and Dennis yeah. grabbed me. No, I said, no, 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 Wait till we get in the locker room. So I told the dude, I said, hey, yo, hey, get your stuff, go to the locker room. Yeah. Go, get off my bench. So he's like, what did you say? I said, I said, if I have to ask you again, they'll be carrying you off the bench. <laughs> get up, get, get your ass in the locker room, get off my bench. So he goes to the bench, he goes, he, he's like walking off, you know. I said, yeah, we're gonna finish this when this is when this is over. And he looked at me like with a fear on his face, because he knew now, like, oh. So he went to the locker room. I told everybody, I said, hey, listen. It's gonna be a short little coaching, coaching situation here. Uh, just keep playing hard. We're up ten. Let's push it to twenty. All right, you guys go out and get some shots up. I said uh, the kid's name was Justin Joe. I need you to stay in here. And then Dennis like, you be staying here? I said no, no, you don't need <laughs> just be ready to call the ambulance. So, so he like, he starts laughing. So I told Joe, I said Joe, here's what's gonna happen right now. I said I'm finna beat your ass. Okay, so you need to learn a lesson. You're not gonna chuck me like that and embarrass me and in, in, on the court like that. And so when he saw that I was serious, he was like, oh, Coach, I really, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to fight you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I said, no, Joe. I said, you, I think you really wanted to fight me. I think you really, you, you tested me. And I said, now you done poked the bear. Now, <laughs> damn the game. Damn coaching. I don't need this. I'm finna whoop your ass and go home. So he was like, he literally was like in tears. Like, I'm so sorry, Coach. I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> and I said, all right, here's what's, here's what's going to happen. I said, if you ever do that again, I said, I'm going to drop you where you stand. Right where you stand. Wherever you did it, I'm going to drop you where you stand. Yeah. I said, you don't do things like that. You don't do a coach, whether it's me or anybody else. If you are mad because you got pulled out, ask why you got pulled out. I'll tell you why you got pulled out. You know why you got pulled out? Because your man, you missed a shot and you're pouting and your man went down three straight times and got dunks on post lane sprints. That's why you came out. If you would have asked me that, I would have told you. So now, so let this be known. Don't ever do that again. And I said, you might have cost yourself a call up in the NBA because there's NBA scouts in the stands right now and you might have cost yourself a call up by doing that. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 That's the lesson, they, ladies. They'll notice Your little that young right generation, away. listen to your coach whether you like it or not, baby. Well, you might get a two-piece with Fanta. Stacy <laughs> kind of teed up our, our next topic, Woo! which will be the whole Caitlin Clark uh, Caitlin! Chicago Sky thing. That's coming up next. But first, I want to tell you about our great friend, Jeff Vukovic. When it comes to being treated like royalty, Jeff will take care of all your insurance needs, auto, home, and business. You can reach him at jeffvuk.com. That's jeffvuk.com. The phone number, if you're not watching on YouTube, 847 847- 825-4783. Stacy, you got a jingle for us. Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> wow. Very nicely done. Hey, we're coming back with a topic that's been bantered around by just about every uh, analyst and talk show host around the country. That is next on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Give me the hot sauce rolls on. We're coming at you on a Tuesday evening from the our beautiful headquarters here in Palatine. Hey, it's been interesting to watch the national outrage at the whole Caitlin Clark thing. I mean, she has been getting played very physically by veteran WNBA players around the league, and it kind of all blew up when they faced the Chicago Sky in Indianapolis on Saturday. Kennedy Carter felt like uh, she, she got hit with an elbow, so on an inbound situation, she ran into Caitlin Clark, and she went sprawling, and, and the whole thing, the next day the WNBA upgraded it to a flagrant one foul, they find the Sky organization for not making the players available to the media. And Kennedy Carter, who's a WNBA veteran, who's had some issues at, at other stops, let's be honest, it wasn't a basketball play. But at the same point, it's not, it's not like she hauled off and punched her either. No. And if you've seen the WNBA and watched some of those games, these games are very physical. I, I mean, I've seen girls throw punches. You know, you, you, you look at the, the big girl that was in Russia. Um, uh, Brittany. Brittany. Brian, I saw her chase a girl from one end of the court to the other. To the other. It looked like an NBA game in the 70s, yeah. you know? Charles um, Oakley. Yeah, Charles Oakley. I mean, <laughs> it was it's it's a physical league. Now listen, there's a there's a lot of girls out there that are probably tired of hearing about Caitlin Clark. You know, there there are. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, Caitlin Clark did this, Caitlin Clark did. There's some people out there that are haters in the WNBA, but there are also people out there that have appreciated what she's done for the game of basketball. This younger generation that's coming up, these next three years are some star players are coming. That Juju Watkins is going to be the truth. You think Caitlin Carr, but she's going to be able to play at this league. She can play right now as like an 18-year-old. You can put her out there right now, she'll give you 25. Caitlin Clark, the one thing I've noticed about her is, is that she's not as athletic as she looked at Iowa. She looked real athletic at Iowa, and now she's up here with these girls. She's going to have to get stronger. She's going to have to work on her game because... At this level, the professional level, they take away your strengths. You're not able, like I told you, I remember, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I said, hey, I, used, I had, used to have a turnaround jumper that was unguardable at the college level. I mean, I just, whoop, shoot it over everybody. Patrick even threw my shot, my first two shots for the turnaround jumper into the row three. So I had to learn very quickly, that shot's not going to work anymore. I need to get yeah. a counter. You have to counter some of the things that you like to do and have a counter for. You take this away, all right, cool, then I come back with this. Uh, up and under, a fake and up and under. There's always counters to every, you know, move that you have. She's going to have to get stronger. But two things with her team. They're not very good, number one. Okay, let's just be honest. But they have two first-round picks. The number one pick, Boston was the number one pick, and now you got Clark's number one pick. So you can build around those two guys. You got a center and a, and a guard. The coach, I, I don't know what they're doing to help this young lady because – you know, she's having a hard time bringing the ball up. She leads she's the league in turnovers. She's getting guarded 94 feet. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's, she's leading the league in turnovers. I think she's like 60 turnovers in like eight games or something. Um, <laughs> maybe, right there whispers. You're going yeah. to survive. Oh, oh, Heimlich. Get a Heimlich. <laughs> my oh, oh, drink some beer. Oh, oh yeah, Lord. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you all right? I thought we were going to lose him. Uh, that's Cold blue. All right. 
All right, we, we got chicken. I don't know. Wing. A little, a chicken might wing have a little, little, might have a little piece tucked out in there. I don't know what's going on. I'll get ready hit him in the stomach, make it come out. <laughs> well, you started it by giving me that little tweak earlier. That oh, that yeah, purple nurple you gave me. I gave his little nipple. All right, it's hard. You know, hard. you know why we know Stacy's stuff though, Mark. He shows up in this hot pink. Yeah, you got to be secure <laughs> yourself, Mark. You gotta, this is Mark. You got to be secure in yourself, America. I'm not afraid the pink cup, okay? <laughs> All right, don't don't try to don't try to out me like that again. I'm hiding behind Kobe. I saw you. Do. I saw you. I but saw but you. anyway, if I was really interrupted by this man choking on a chicken wing, <laughs> okay? Um, the coach needs to 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 run some plays because she's such a great shooter. Yeah. Run her off some screens. Get, get her, her off, off the some ball. Screen. Get her off yeah. the ball. Get her wide open where she's coming off some screens. Okay, that's another thing. Second thing, if I'm the coach of that team. If any of my players get knocked on the floor, yeah. I better see all my team over there. If I, if somebody does a non basketball play, we we're gonna know. You gotta have some. Sometimes you gotta have a goon on your team. You gotta have that one girl on your team that you pay to take care of people. <laughs> there's okay? a few. You look there, at those there's, there's a few. Hey, <laughs> there's hey. some goons. <laughs> there's some there's some girls out there like that girl who hit Caitlin. She's a kind of a goon. Yeah, because she's yeah. been in a lot of fights. So that's the kind of girl you want on your she's team. She's bounced around the league. So yeah. so if if something happens to Caitlin, then Michael had you know Oakley. Okay, guys have goons, and so yeah. Look at this quote here. That's what that's what really made that took it to another level. Not only did they have the play, but then you know she, she didn't want to talk to the media. I'm not answering no Caitlin Clark questions. I didn't say anything. And then it it just took it to well, a whole new level. Then people you, talking about racism yeah. and the whole thing. Well, this is where it comes yeah. to hating right now. Besides the three point shooting, what does she bring to the table, man? Okay, first of all, what she brings to the table, she brought jets. You guys are now <laughs> flying, yeah. you know, flying. But like isn't that true in every players. sport? There's always someone who elevates a d- yes. different level every couple of years, yes. and they should be embracing they're, that. They're, they're they're bringing in TV. Listen, the Las Vegas Aces is the most dominant team in WNBA history. Okay. Right. They're, they've won like three in a row. They're probably going to win four this year. They've got a dynasty going in Las Vegas, and no one hardly even knows about it except outside of Vegas and the, and the real true fans of the WNBA. But that fan base that watches Caitlin, they don't know though. They don't know about Las Vegas. They don't know about the Liberty. They don't know any of those things. They just know Caitlin. And so she's brought in a whole different new, you know, fresh blood per se, into the WNBA, an infusion of life into the NBA. They got TV revenue now coming in, which now has allowed them to be able to fly like the NBA players. And there's an excitement. Her games, I saw something where uh, Pat McAfee had some on his show where they were talking about the top four rookies and how much of an impact they're making uh, on the national level. And she outdistanced everyone on every single thing that they did. Now, you look at her numbers, and she's rookie of the month, but... Her biggest thing right now is she's turning the ball over a lot, like five turnovers a game. And she's used to being on a team where – now, a lot of that's her teammates, too. They have them can't catch passes. Like, she's throwing people behind the yeah, back passes. Yeah, it's a bad team, yeah. And they're, they're flipping them, you know, rolling them off their arms or legs. The other day, she had a, a out-of-bounds play. She faked it, and then the girl back cut. The girl was wide open. She hits her right underneath the, the basket. All she had to do was go up left and lay the ball up. She pump faked, went to the other side, and, and couldn't get the ball above the rim. But see, the part of the problem is that she's not the only player who's been getting exposed to physical play. Angel Reese, this guy, got mm-hmm. dragged down from behind by Alyssa Thomas. Alyssa Thomas got thrown out of the game. And then Angel Reese talked at practice yesterday, and she was talking about the fact that, you know, it's not just Caitlin Clark who's bringing attention to the league. She very arrogantly said, it's me, too. Yeah. You know, and all the players want to feel like, they're part of what's caused the WNBA to explode. I think they're jealous of the fact that everyone's saying it's the Caitlin Clark effect where, you know, the WNBA has been growing the last last half dozen years. Well, their and, rivalry played a big part I mean, in this. You talk about a sure. lot of the great players that have come into the WNBA in, in the past half decade, <clears throat> and now all of a sudden they're making it sound like it's only because of Caitlin Clark. Listen, mm-hmm. they can say whatever they want to. They can say they can, they can say they can hate all they want to. This girl, what she did at the college level and when she was in college, has not been done. Okay, bottom line. She raised the level of people watching. She took a, an Iowa team to the finals, uh, NCAA finals. They shouldn't even been there. Two years in a row. Two yeah. years in a row. They shouldn't have been there. If you take her off that team, Iowa might be in the middle of the pack in the Big Ten. Coach quit right away. Now oh, yeah. Gone. Coach is like, <laughs> Coach is like, soon, 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 I can't do it with this group. You know, she's like, as <laughs> soon as she realized that Kate wasn't coming for yeah. year five, I'm done. she's like, I'm doing my resume right now. I'm going out in winter, baby. They're going to give me a statue. They're going to put my name up in Raptors. Because if she would have lasted one more year, 
Man, they would have chased her out of Iowa. <laughs> it was all Caitlin Clark. See, she sucks. Good job, coach. Smart. Way to get out. That's a smart move, baby. Look at Fran over there wearing Caitlin hey. Clark's new shoes. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Aren't those Caitlin Clark's? No? Oh, no, they look like... Oh, they're they look like... Angel Reese's? <laughs> Reese's Pieces? I don't know what they look like. They, they don't look... Oh, Lord. So what, what do you think about Angel Reese? She's very outspoken. You know, she wants to have her life off the court with fashion and everything else. But she's drawn a lot of attention to herself. Is that is that going to be good or bad for her long term? <sighs> the, the one thing I didn't like, I mean, I I, I like her. I think she she's going to be she's going to be a very good player for them. The one thing I I don't I didn't like was when the girl hit Caitlin Clark and she yeah, she, she was stand seen up stand up cheering it on. There's no there's that's not necessary. Okay, you might not like the girl. You know, you did the thing last year, yeah, yeah. and she didn't do it to you. She did it to someone else in another another part right, of the tournament. Right. But you felt like you had to bring some attention to it and do it yourself. It wasn't like the girl was your friend she did it to, and I'm paying her back because you did my friend this way. You did it because it was an attention moment. You were winning the game, and you could do that. And so um, I just think if she just focuses on herself, and not get into this like, you know, it's me versus her. Because that's the way it sounded when she was talking about it. It's like, you know, she ain't the only one. You know, ride the wave. Because imagine if people thought that about Michael Jordan. Think about how Michael Jordan elevated the game. When he first came in, people didn't want to. They, they were doing him like they're doing Caitlin Clark. You know, he, he's the cash cow. He's the one that gave you guys uh, shoe endorsements. Because at that time, there was only two people in the league, maybe three people who had their own signature shoes. You had, you had Magic, Magic and Bird, and, Bird Dr. and Dr. J. That's, yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. Michael came in, changed the whole game. You know, all the endorsements, all the, the commercials. You weren't seeing guys in doing commercials until MJ like started coming to town. I mean, the great Dr. J wasn't doing commercials. So he, it's very similar. Michael was getting hard fouls, guys, you know, freezing them out in the all-star games, you know, treating them differently than everybody else. It's documented. And so Caitlin Clark is coming in with the, like kind of the Michael Jordan effect. I'm not saying she's Michael Jordan as the player, right, right. but she's Michael Jordan, the the cash cow outside of basketball. She's coming in with $20 million in endorsements. But if you've played this right, if I'm Angel Reese and I'm her consultant, you play this rivalry up to the max. Well, she said she's comfortable being the villain. Yeah, yeah, but but, but play it up in the right way and yeah. show up in the really slick, you know, like villain outfits, like very stylish. And I know you like that, Stace, instead of the yeah. men, which yeah, is well, nice yes, to hear. Yes, yes, I, I do but, like but, that. But, I do like that. I, I don't want to see but, no men dressed like the women. But, but if she plays that upright, I mean, she can get her but own endorsement story. But the, but Maybe not rivalry, shoes, but the, a clothing but line. The rivalry, but the rivalry is not a, really a rivalry because they don't play the same position. So you need to, to be able to play off that, you need Paige Beckers to come in next year. And be that be the the or 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 Sabrina Anescu. That that's that's the rivalry you should you should try to build up because those are two really good players. But it's gonna take it's really gonna take Caitlin Clark because she's got to get caught up on the basketball part of it right now. Because you can tell right now when you watch her face, she doesn't look happy at all. Like she doesn't look like she doesn't look like, oh man, God. Well, the schedule is ridiculous too. They played eleven games in the first twenty days, and the WNBA, they only play a forty game season, so they're usually spaced yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> I, they didn't do any or any favors. I know that was a lot to accommodate national television because everybody wanted Caitlin Clark, but they played a ton of games, and and the, it's a bad team. It is a bad team, and you know they want they want her on TV. You know she know they know that she brings in viewers, whether they win or not, they don't care because they, it's, it's Caitlin Clark. She has a Caitlin Clark effect, but at the same time, you know you have to take into consideration once she's still a rookie. Rookies going to take their lumps their first year. Okay, we all do, and then rookies hit a wall. You know, the, you know the, the games that we play in college are nowhere near what the games we're going to play at the pro level. And playing 11 games out of 20, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a lot for a, a young yeah, lady. they're not used to, to that. Play. They're not used schedule. to that. Now, even the veterans are not used to it. So you're asking Kaylin Clark to do it, and she's basically out there, listen, whether you want to accept it or not, the, 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 the ladies in the WNBA, she's a, a, a big part of the reason why there's an interest in the game right now. And so what those other teams need to do, they need to play good basketball. They need to show that this product is a very good product. Las Vegas needs to continue to do what they do. New York, these other teams, flashy games. You'll get the players out there who are highly skilled. They should be featured more. You're going to have more eyes on the WNBA, and it's only going to help the WNBA grow. But if we're going to sit around and be uh, haters and we're going to be petty and we're going to do petty things, your, your league will never get to where it's supposed to go. They can be a $100 million economy this year if they play it right. Uh, and that's from 60 growing. last year. Yeah, it's so. like crazy. 
It's, yeah. They got to do it right, like Stacy said. But it's going to mm-hmm. be an, a storyline throughout the entire summer, Caitlin Clark and how she improves during her rookie season with the Indiana Fever. Here in Chicago, people are wondering what Caleb Williams is going to do as a rookie. And mm. the thing that I really like is he's embraced the city of Chicago. He's been everywhere. He's mm-hmm. been going. He's been going to games on both sides of town, White Sox and Cubs. Did you hear the story that he was at Top Golf the other day with Cole Komet, and they stayed? They were trying to close the place, but he wanted to win. It's like Michael Jordan playing yeah. cards, and he wouldn't he wouldn't leave Top Golf <laughs> until he was had a chance to to beat Cole Komet. Although Cole eventually won, but you like that competitiveness, and that that gives you an inkling into what kind of player he's going to be as an NFL quarterback. Well, I, I think he's done a good job of of winning the people over here in the city of Chicago. You know, because he came in, there's still that Justin Fields group, right, and right. and then the locker room. You know, you had to win the locker room over. I think he's won the locker room over. I saw some reports. That they they said you know they would not be surprised if they got to the Super Bowl this year with a rookie quarterback. I think that's asking a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's asking a lot. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that he doesn't do what uh, the kid in Houston did. You know, come out and CJ Stroud, CJ yeah. Stroud, took and have to a, took him to a playoff and have like an unbelievable first year. You know, because everything is in place for them to have a successful season, not just an eight and eight season or whatever. This is this is set up for them to to possibly win their division and get to a playoff game and then maybe even go deep. Yeah, it's going to be really fascinating. They, they start training camp earlier than any other team because they're playing in the hard in the Hall of Fame game. And they're uh, playing the hard yeah, knocks. Yeah, they're in hard knocks too. Remember, they, didn't want, remember they, they said they didn't want to do they it. They didn't want it. They didn't want it. But, but the NFL they got, said, you're going to yeah, be. You you're got Taylor Williams. You're going to take it. <laughs> and we we look, we're looking at y'all having the same kind of jump. That, that Detroit had? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are going to be on it. That's going to be fun because the Bears have always been, you know, it's a family-run business. They kind of like, you know, they've got that fortress up in Lake Forest, and, and they want to yeah. keep their business private. Hard Knocks is a way of really getting into what these people are like behind the scenes. It'll be interesting to see how Matt Eberflus and some of the other, you know, coaches and players handle that HBO spotlight. Well, half of them make the playoffs, Hard Knocks teams. Well, let's hope that the, the Bears are one of them, yeah. That the, the curse is actually not what people think it is. It's actually the coaches get fired. Remember, Cleveland had it when uh, Baker Mayfield was a rookie. Yeah, yeah. They had hard knocks there. So, And, and I think Caleb will be great. You yeah. Know, he's used to being out in L.A., being in the center of attention. I, th- listen, I don't think he's going to have any problem with that. Listen, he, he's, he's been a star since he came on the University of Oklahoma campus. So this is no pressure for him. The, the pressure is going to be Oklahoma. His, yeah, Oklahoma. He should have had that Heisman. should have been ours. Then he got a USC. But the, 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 the situation is going to be, I think we're all kind of overlooking it a little bit because, you know, we, we've had all these wide receivers come in. we got all these weapons there. It's the offensive line. We're not really not – no one's really talking about that right now. And to me, that's the only thing I can see that can derail this team from being, you know, a, a good team to a team that could be possibly great. And they, and, and they haven't really addressed it yet. And I know, I know there's an, an, you know, the, also the, the pass rush to help sweat on the other side. That's something that still hasn't really been addressed. You know, they, they went out and got some guys, but there's probably going to be some guys that get cut that, you know, you'd be able to put on your roster. But the offensive line, I'm, I'm really concerned with that because, um, you know, that kid has to be up and he's got to be healthy this year. You can't have him get hurt the first couple of games of the season and next thing you know he's out with a shoulder injury and that, that would derail their whole season because then you'd have to play Badgett coming in. And I've seen some video of him. He looked pretty good in the video. You know, so, um, and he's comfortable in the system, but I, I, no, no, I don't know. I can, I don't think he can get us to that where you want us to go. Right. It's interesting, Stacy. you made the Oklahoma reference. I was watching oh, the uh, softball this <laughs> afternoon, and they were on the ropes for a while, but they came back. That's the right. heart of it, never like underestimate the, Sooners, the heart of a just, champion. Just like the Sooners, baby. Boomer Nation, right there. I, they, they, I think they, how many championships they won in that softball? They won three well, in a row. Three in a row, four. yeah. So they're but, going for four. But they're the number two seed behind Texas, so that's the matchup in the finals. That's two Ooh. out of three. Ooh, but see, we lost our stud pitcher from last year. Yeah. She went to, I think, Nebraska. She jumped in the portal. Oh, more NIL money. Man, I tried to get the boosters. I said, hey, man, what do y'all need? What do you need me to do? Yeah. And they waited around. They waited around. So I just sent them a case of Doritos. It wasn't enough, Mark. We couldn't get her a case of Doritos. She said she, she like, like feet. She said she liked Cool Ranch. I got, I got a couple cases of good. And then she just left. 
Who was he? Fred Hoiberg dug deep in his pocket. Yeah. Hey, man, Fred, Fred, Fred got money from everywhere. He's still, <laughs> he's, he's, I think he's still getting paid in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> so he got, enough, he got enough money to bring that girl over here. Damn, yeah, Fred. Fred is his own. He's the only NIL guy. He's just bringing people over all the money he got. Yeah, somewhere Lincoln, Fred's ears are burning. Uh, Talking about him on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Catching strains. <laughs> Catching strains. Freddie, baby. Freddie, that's my boy. Well, we'll talk a uh, little baseball, a little UFC, and wrap things up next on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Hey, before we get to the sad state of affairs that is Chicago baseball, we got our guy, Timmy Whispers, who's going to tell you how you can get a bottle of Stacy's Signature Hot Sauce. Thanks, Mark. It's been a while since I did the regular ad read. <laughs> See if you can even, get through it. I don't it. even like his voice. <laughs> Jeez, go bring back yeah. Christopher Walken. Jesus. <laughs> no, we, we, we're going to bring people back to, to when we first started this show. Oh, oh, are you ready for this? Yes, you guys have heard this in probably two years. Yeah, we haven't heard you read that. Let's go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Are you looking to score the hottest sauce in the game? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're in luck. <laughs> We've got all the sauce your kitchen needs. From Chicago Fire 1871, the hottest of the bunch, to our king's favorite, St. Pat's Verde. Give me the hot sauce as you covered. Any kind of special codes or deals for the Hold on, Mark. I'm not done yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Trying to speed things up a little bit. We got to oh, yeah, by. Give me the hot show. sauce.com yeah. and use code KING21 to get 21% off your first oh, order. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was really good. You know, it'd be funny if you took the 1871 and just took Big Chuck. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then did it. <laughs> hey, it was like, it was like the, the Oscars when they had the little camera that says you yeah. need to get off. And yeah. he's still reading. Yeah, that's what it was right there. We were all, I fell asleep for a second. I'm back. I can't believe we used to read that. Yeah. <laughs> we got to change this up. Yeah, we need to, we need to bring Christopher Walker. We get the hook. I got to yeah. find a different voice. Yeah. yeah I'll Frank, have a new do, one next week. Don't do Mike Tyson. No, don't do that. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> no. Hey, hey, speaking no. of that, they had to postpone the fight uh, with him and Jake Paul. They postponed it? I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, he's yeah. been sick. He got sick. Yeah. Oh, I did. Yeah, actually, I did see that part. I, I didn't you think that, that okay, was, Mike? I feel okay. I think I can still get there. Oh I thought we had to punch them once. Mark, why the hell do you even <laughs> throw a pass like that? <laughs> Jesus, you're not setting him up. He just traveled. Don't oh, do it. My yeah, they were trying to hold back the, the you know. Uh, the, all right. The that's okay. Yeah. yeah. But, I think I saw a put a cat. Oh, that did get put a cat. <laughs> Sylvester the Alley oh Cat. I just yeah. drink a little oh, prime oh, my you know, God. from his brother, get all jacked up, oh, punch him right in the face. All right. Hey, we talked about Chicago baseball, the Cubs and White Sox. Are playing as we speak at Wrigley Field. Da, 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 da. The White Sox have lost 11 games in a row, but they are winning tonight at the friendly confines. Oh, not it is long. Five to nothing. White Sox. Throw out the records, America. Now the rain delay. No one cares when they when they play. They lost record. 11 in a row. Jesus. The Cubs, the Cubs have lost nine. The Cubs out have of like 11. nine of 11, too. Yeah, so yeah. This is a battle. This is a toilet bowl game. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, I wanted to go see that game, too. Yeah, I want to go check it out. For losing uh, to the Sox badly at home. At yeah. home. And Imanaga was pitching, too. No. They got five runs in the fourth. It was set up by an error. The Cubs can't field. They can't run the bases. Their bullpen's terrible. How do they, how, okay, they wait, have wait, a wait. terrible manager. How, how in the <laughs> yeah, world? The highest paid manager <laughs> yeah. in the history of the game. How in the world yeah. did they just all of a sudden just bottom out? They were 17-9 and nine in late April, and they've been dog shit yeah. ever since. They can't hit. They've got, like... They're at the bottom of the league in every offensive category from the start of May till now. It's, uh, you know, what was the manager these, these are guys with track records. What was the manager before? Uh, David Ross. David Ross. Yeah. David Ross we haven't heard from David Ross at is all. A, David, David Ross is on a beach somewhere because he got paid. Yeah, he's in Florida. He's somewhere. He's still getting paid. He's, yeah, he's still getting paid, and he's over there laughing right now. Oh, y'all you thought, know he's laughing. Y'all thought it was me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me. It's crazy that both teams are so bad, and the White Sox have a have a roster that, that would embarrass a lot of AAA teams. You know, the one the only move they could make right now is to bring in Isaac Guillen as the manager. That that would be the only thing I think that would spark some interest in it. Well, I tell you what, he was That'd he was smart. he was very heated about the manager the other day. I was watching the show with him and Frank on it yeah. on the post game show. I was like, I was like, Ooh. <laughs> he was talk he was talking some big Smack. stuff, man. I was like, man. I was waiting for him. I wonder if the principal office called him. <laughs> well, excuse me, Ozzy. No. Because he was he was hot. And that's one thing about Ozzy. He's only going to tell you what he feels. He doesn't care. Like, right. You can just tell you don't care. He's going to say what he feels. Ain't nobody going to stop him. And But he was he was ripping the manager the other day. I was like, whoa. Like I said, man, Ozzy, you might want to get that job there, buddy. You might want to pull back a little bit. 
Yeah, and uh, I guess that leads us to another hot news topic. Of course, the announcement this week that the White Sox, the Bulls, and the Blackhawks are going to be part of a brand new network Ooh. called the Chicago Sports Network. And CHS and baby. Stacy's already been uh, involved in trying to promote the new venture. Yes, you know what? Um, you know, I didn't really know. Like we, we were kind of kept in the dark all you know, all year about it. Um, it was always a talk, you know, that maybe we, uh, we might or we might not. Um, and then it was, they, they let us know they were going to go to a new station. So it's going to be interesting, you know, because we, we were spoiled, you know, like just, just us, like the, the announcers, we've been spoiled being on, you know, on uh, NBC and, um, you're used to certain things a certain way. And now we're going into something that we don't really know. Like we, we don't know what to expect. Um, so, but it's a challenge. It'll be a lot of fun. You know, we're still going to be there. So, um, and we're going to call the games the same way as we did. We call it on, you know, uh, NBC and Comcast. So it's going to be the same. My personality ain't going to change. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I know I talked to Adam. Adam's looking forward to it. I just hope we can bring some of our people along right. with us to, to that know the ins and outs of the business. And, you know, you bring some of those guys over from NBC or, you know, or uh, wherever else, you know, there's a couple of names, you know, that I'd like out, you know, to see out there, you know, so you have a little comfortability with those people because you've worked with them for 15, 16 years. And there's, there's this comfort zone you have with those guys. So especially in a new, you know, endeavor like this, this is a big move. So. Well, I hope the new network can bring over most of the people from NBC Sports Chicago. Yeah. I, I worked there for 14 years made a lot of great friendships. There are a lot of super talented people. They're not just the faces that you see on TV, but a lot of the people behind the scenes, yep. the cameramen, the, the editors, the producers do some great work over there. And obviously anytime there's a cha major change like this, some people are going to get caught in the crossfire there, but I, I just wish all the best for all those people. And hopefully that the people who are in charge of hiring, over at the new networks, will give those people, you know, the first the first look at trying to keep their jobs. Yeah, I I, I think they will. You know, I think because you you have in my I mean, I'm, listen, I don't make any decisions, but to me, it's a no brainer because you're transitioning into something that's very new, and you have these people that we just left that know all of this stuff. So, uh, and plus, it's Chicago station. It's going to be a Chicago you know network. So you kind of want Chicago people working, but you know, I don't make those decisions, but. Uh, one face I know I, I, I met that's over there right now is, is my man, Joe Riley. Shout out to Joe Riley. Joe's uh, the best. Joe's yeah, the best. Guy. Joe, if it wasn't for America, listen to this, okay? You know, I know you guys listen to me on TV, and, you know, I would not have gotten this chance if it wasn't for my man, Joe Riley. He's the one that really, like, you know, supported me. He was me. the assistant news director yep. when Stacey yep. started. And when they were deciding, you know, who was going to be the guy to replace, you know, Red Kerr, um, you know, be that third man, because there was going to be a third man on that team. Um, you know, a lot of the guys in the, in the office didn't think I was ready. They, they thought I was good, but they, I've only done studio at that time. So yeah. they didn't really know if I could do transition from studio to, you know, doing, you know, doing the games and Joe Riley, you know, always was a big supporter. So yeah, he's ready. We will hit a home run with him and boom. And now like 19 years later, it's like I'm, <laughs> I'm still here and I saw his familiar face and I shot some commercials for him and it was great seeing him because he, I've always appreciate him. Uh, he's always been kind to me, always been helpful to me. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm where I'm at today. And the programming now will be shot either out of the United center for bulls and Blackhawks or at Guaranteed rate field for the White Sox. So they'll take the show actually to the game venue, I think, which is a nice thing because, oh, yeah. as Stacey knows, that ba basement office space oh. over at 350 Orleans was not, was not the best. Let me tell you something. You know, I mean, you know, listen, you know, give Jerry Reinsdorf some credit. I mean, Jerry Reinsdorf has been building this up for mm -hmm. a long time. You know, it started with a TSN. Uh, I worked for him doing some college games during the strike. Uh, and he's always had this this baby growing, you know, and he's been doing it the right way. It's not something that he's, oh, I, I'm, I'm just going to throw it together and let's do it. This has been something he's been growing for a while. And uh, they built those studios in when they, you know, when the Bulls built that offices out, they put studios in there. And it's, and it's really nice to be able to go from the, the floor that you can actually go right to the studio, which is really right. cool. You yeah. know, you don't have to drive clear across. The Listen. I love, you know, NBC. I love my time over at NBC, you know, but we, we've been in some very different venues coming up. We were, we were out there in uh, Oak Brook out there in the cold, <laughs> cold little uh, thing. It was like, a, it was like a freezer. Trailer. Yeah. And, uh, and then we moved to, we moved over to the Merchant Mart, which was cool, you know, but, uh, 
And, and then half the time we couldn't get in because our, our car didn't work. <laughs> had, to, had to beat on the door. I'm beating on the door. Hey, open the door, open the door. They're like, who are you? I'm like, man, you don't open this damn door. I mean, black people going to be sitting out here at 611 knocking on the damn door trying to get in. Because, you know, you had, you had to walk all the way up to the front to go there. Right. I always want yeah. to cut I always want to cut the corners and go from, you know, you go to the back of the newsroom to the to the studio. Yeah. I hated going all the way, walking all the way up to the front. And the, and the dead of winter walking up that hill oh, under the wind. Oh, man. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, because we had to park, we had to park uh, over over across the street on the corner of New Orleans and there's a there's a parking lot right over there and you had to walk up that damn that damn sidewalk yeah. it was cold as hell I was like oh <laughs> hell to the no but Stacey's we, moving on up hey, now just hey, like the Jefferson hey remember the green remember the green room Mark <laughs> me and Mark you sit in the green room that's right we go we go and get some food over at East Bank Club <laughs> we come back man we had a blast I, I ain't gonna lie I had a blast with Mark me and Mark had a blast over there it was me and Mark and we had we had Norm Van Leer was with us yeah and Norm was fun and we I had a great time all the guys I worked that was one of the trade offs though. Because like I, I hated leaving the pre and post game show. Because when I first started, uh, you know, you you had they only had the the pre game show, and you know you weren't making any money. You weren't making any money. You would make more money, uh, you know, flipping burgers at McDonald's. <laughs> so, but we didn't do it for the money, Mark. We did it for the experience. That's we right. did it for the love of the we game. Did it for the people, for all we of you for out the people. there. Bulls Nation. <laughs> it was for you. It's for you that we did this. And then all of a sudden, man. We jumped over to the. I, I went from the. I went from the outhouse to the penthouse, baby. That's I right. said, "Mark, I love you. I'll see you <laughs> I later, go. brother. I, I, I want to stay, Mark. No, I don't, Mark. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to the games, baby. I gotta get my suits ready, baby. See you later, Mark. I love you, boy. I, if you need me on your show, call me. I'll come over and see you. You left me in the basement. That's what happened for you. <laughs> hey, let's talk a little UFC before we UFC. wrap things up. Uh, what'd you think of the card last weekend? Oof. <laughs> That's a great review, Tim. A little, you want to expand on that? You, 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 want, you want the knockouts? You want, especially with the, the yeah. There was no cards knockouts, and uh, so a little, Ooh. little bit. Uh, oh, there's a broken arm, though. There's a bro. Uh, uh, oh, my. there it is, right there. This guy right here, <laughs> he tried to get him to tap out, but the kid underneath, the little guy in the red shorts, he refused to tap out, and then he was telling the referee, like, "Hey, man, I'm going to break his arm, but you don't tap out." You know, and the guy was like, you know, the referee wouldn't stop him. He broke his arm. It was nasty, Ooh, too. Uh, that's oh. Not, that's not good. oh, it was gross. It was gross. And then uh, Islam, Mikhail, what is his name? Makachev. Makachev. Uh, he had a staph infection leading up to the fight with Dustin Poirier, which turned out to be Dustin Poirier's last fight. And no one really likes to stand with Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier's one of the better strikers. This kid stayed that's in front of him. split in the head, though. Yeah, he, stayed, yeah, he stood in front of him the whole time. And then at the end, decide to take him down and choke him out. He said, enough of this. I showed everybody I can throw hands. Now let me go ahead and finish him. Yeah, a lot of respect there with those guys. But, uh, yeah, a little dull. Yeah. They, they allow the guys to stay on the mat too long these days. They used to stand them up after 45 seconds. And then these championship fights now, they just let it go. And they'll, it gets a little Yeah, so it's a it's crotch, wrestling, it's a yeah. crotch wrestling match. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and this is nasty, man. And then the, the like, Strickland uh, yeah. Stacey fight. King's review. It's a yeah. crotch yeah. wrestling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, this was some great, great strikes and all that. And you got to kill that guy to actually put him down. Yeah, he's and funny, though. He like he, 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 some of the things he says is hilarious. This is a good fight, though. It could have went either way. Yeah, look, he was look, right look, there. Look, look at Dave Trelli's car. See, this is a, yeah, some of them was way off. Was way off, right? Yeah, I mean, me. Look at this. Look, Who's look paying you off? Look at the pink car, uh, America. If you can see it, Dave Torelli, Boy, that that he's man. He had him winning like every round. Yeah, we might need to check him. No, nope. yeah, we might need to check. The whispers. Him. What's uh, what's going on with Conor McGregor? I heard he postponed a news conference to promote his upcoming fight. Yeah, is, he gonna, is he going to go through with it, or is he going to back out? I, I think he's going to go through with it. I mean, actually, he's. I think he has a huge advantage in that fight mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons, but um, I, I have no idea why he would delay that. Let I, me just say this. I'm a Conor McGregor fan. His mind's not in fighting. Right, yeah. yeah he doesn't need to do he, it listen, anymore. He's doing it. He's, he's fighting because of the fan base and the thrill of fighting. You know, Connor's not as not, not the training hungry. Thing is not the there. training, he doesn't want to train. You know, it's worth half a billion. Yeah, and that's sport. If you're not 100 percent focused, you're yeah. gonna get hurt. Yeah, you're gonna get hurt. And this yeah. is and he's these guys, the guys he are fighting, those guys are fighting for their livelihood. You know, and he's in there like he's already worth a half a billion dollars. He's got a a, a billion dollar yacht. You know, he's got his whiskey. Yeah. He's got his his restaurant. He doesn't need to do he it. He doesn't need to do it. But there's a part of him, just like in every athlete, there's a part in you that doesn't want to quit. You know, because that's that competitive nature that you have. Like when a when an NBA player is getting to the end of their year or a football player is getting to the end of their career, they don't want to quit. But their body is saying, no, you're done. I can't yeah. do this anymore. 
but that's that inner strength, that voice in them says they're not done. You hear Tom Brady still talking about it right now. So man, if there's any teams out there need a quarterback, he's like politician for it right now. Brett Farris there at fifty. Brett, yeah, yeah, well, Brett Farris, he's got a lot. He's he sent a couple full. dick pics yeah, to the yeah, Bears. Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm ready to yeah, come back yeah. and beat he's the Packers. Some other he's got some yeah. other issues. Yeah, yeah, he, he needs to just lay low for a while. Yeah. Remember those Wranglers he put out that had no zipper? Wow, wow! <laughs> Did you have a pair of those on the other day? <laughs> Well, of course, I bought a pair. I'm wow. Yeah, he, went, he tried to get an autograph signed for Brett Favre. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Well, speaking of sports scandals, that leads us into our next topic, which is what are we watching? Today is the debut of Clipped, which is a series on FX about the whole Donald Sterling fiasco. Oh. They've got uh, uh, Ed O'Neill from Married with Children is playing Donald Sterling. Perfect. And Lawrence Fishburne's playing Doc Rivers. And the first two <laughs> the first two parts are on tonight. So we'll take a look at that. We'll bring a review. Doc, next wait week. a minute. Lawrence Fishburne is Doc, Doc Rivers. Rivers. Yeah. Oh my God. He's too old. Is he, I know. Is, is, he, getting the, is he getting yeah. the voice you going? Get, yeah. You gotta get me tell you something. You gotta get back. Listen. Blake! Blake! You gotta get back. I wanna see you throw a lob. Uh, CP3! CP3! Get back. Well, you know, Ed O'Neill's known for those those great takes at the camera with the funny faces. I just can't see him playing. I can't see him down Sterling, Sterling either. That seems no. like a big stretch. Yeah, that they, yeah, <laughs> FX always stretches something. Yeah. They always have like the people don't look like the people. Yeah. Who, you know, even Showtime. Even Showtime. <laughs> the, the Showtime that made the Lakers, it even better though. Remember that show, the Showtime with the Lakers? Great. That was great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Adrian Brody, yeah, Brody as Pat Riley. Brody as Pat, <laughs> as Pat Riley. Uh, Jerry West is the dude. It was Jerry West. Yeah. Didn't look like Jerry West. <laughs> it's like a former wrestler. Kareem didn't look like Kareem. No, no it was funny though. The only yeah. one that looked, the, the only couple guys was uh, Magic was good. Magic, Magic and Bird was good. Yeah, Bird looked like Bird. Yeah. Bird yep. like a young bird. It was a fun show. We had Jeff Perlman on talking about it. Yeah, the other guy was based was on his book, so yep. that was a lot of fun. But what what can we recommend you? Got something you didn't like that you're going to tell the folks. Well, about. I watched uh, Atlas, the J Lo movie mm -hmm. about Atlas. Uh, <laughs> that would have been better. She got booty. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, Atlas. 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 No, she is not assless. Oh, <laughs> that's for sure. And uh, she she's uses just not a good actress. I'm just throwing that out there, guys. So she flies out to Uranus. No, I'm just yeah, what? <laughs> so you're giving it one thumb up or what? What are you doing? <laughs> one slap. One slap. Give that one big booty a slap. <laughs> that big butt. <laughs> but I'll give her five slaps. Yeah. <laughs> Even the movie sucks. Bop, bop. Well, the Reeboks with the straps and the boots with the fur. Yeah. It was, oh, it was, oh my God. Stop it. Was, it. Stop it. Get the trick down. Listen. Oh, it was a terrible it, movie. It was one of these things that was obviously written just to go right to video. Yeah, so, sure. yeah. Is yeah. it an okay film? Yeah. Low budget. But, yeah. And they got a big star in it. They must overpaid her to play this role. But it's like, as I, I was saying earlier, like they start to say the lines and you can almost say them. It's the nature of streaming. It's like, it's like they Tubi. They have to keep kicking like, out this content. A lot of it is very average. You ever seen, you ever yeah. seen Tubi? To show too. Any, not, anything named like that, I'm yeah. already out. No, but it's like it's like it's like a, it's like a streaming thing, and yeah. so like you watch the movies on Tubi, yeah. like it's so funny. it's like crazy. Like a guy will be talking, and then he'll pull out a gun, and then and it'll be like a plastic gun. It's not like they, like the, they don't have enough they money. Couldn't even invest. They, in they, a could, real they don't have enough yet. money to really give you the props. <laughs> so a guy will pull out a plastic gun, and then you'll go, you'll hear, you hear in the background, and then and the gun didn't even fire off. <laughs> it's just sitting there, and the guy go. <laughs> well, they call that the Alec Baldwin effect. Wow, that's not funny. Yeah, you had to go there. Oh, sorry. You had to go there. You always yeah, got to go low. Just you can't just again. Stay, sorry, Mark. You just can't stay above water. Oh, you got to go to man. the deep end. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, all right. Well, while you were watching a, a B-list movie, I actually watched an Academy Award now. Yeah, B-list movie. Yeah, did have the word English American in the title? Fiction with Jeffrey oh. Wright. Oh, okay. That, Jeffrey that Wright, is great a actor. Good, he is a fantastic actor. Great actor. So oh, the whole premise good. of it, he, you know, he's an academic guy that what, turns out all this highbrow work, but he can't sell it. So he decides he's going to go to the lowest possible denominator. Does a does a novel just based on, on all kinds of cliches, and it becomes a huge hit. They want to make a movie out of it, and he can't believe that after all the great work he's done in his life, this piece of trash becomes his meal ticket. And there's a lot of family drama that goes in it as well. But a terrific performance by Jeffrey Wright. And it's, Good cast. It, it, yeah, it's streaming free now on uh, Prime. So if you haven't See, seen Mark it, Mark always comes with these these high class educational movies. And you come with trash. <laughs> well, there's been, a lot of laughs. Well, in actually, that I've been taking too. Mark's advice. So I watched mm -hmm. A Man in Full. That was great. 
Yeah, it was good. It was Jeff excellent. Daniels. Jeff yeah, Daniels. Yeah. I started yeah, to watch yeah, that. Yeah. I'm, I'm in there watching that right and now. And then Louder Milk, I just started. Oh, Louder Milk. That, that's good. So. so what do you got, Stace? Uh, Abigail. <laughs> okay, so this little girl, this little cute little girl in the ballerina outfit is a vampire. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why is. did I think it wasn't some, you know, wholesome child's no, movie? Exactly. Look, I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, kill you. Just look, look, at, look how they spell Abigail. You can tell you it's dangerous. Yeah, look at it. Yeah, the like blood. The, the blood's eyes, ripped. You know? yeah. So she's a vampire. And so okay. they so they they're paid these these uh these bad guys are paid to kidnap her because they're trying to get a hold of the father. The mm-hmm. father's a vampire too, but no one knows these people are vampires. So they get locked up with this little girl in this huge mansion, and then she just <laughs> she just like she annihilates just, she just annihilates them, just turns them into just eating everybody up, just taking them off one by one. As usual, America, there's a black guy in the show. Of course. Okay. Never makes it to the end. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil it to you. You you probably are not gonna be spoiled by it, but he will not make it past the past the end. So I'm just gonna throw this one guy was in there. He didn't make it. I'm just gonna throw oh, that out to you. That's the spoiler man. alert. But it's really not a spoiler because I think everybody knows that. Well, he never saw Get Out. Oh, I saw Get Out. Yeah, I saw Get Out. No, the guy in the movie didn't see it. No. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh control, man. man so next week we'll have a review on clipped yeah it's, it's clipped it's, it's gotta be bad but we'll uh yeah i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch it just so i can come here and talk trash about it because i you can you i mean lawrence fishburne's gotta be 75 so that's your homework assignment folks watch clips and clip. can, we you can uh we see can see all me. revel in the uh Man, this is me this is me uh, <laughs> i'm in milwaukee right now we suck Giannis is playing for Greece. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do next year. Uh, I love you, America. You know who would like Abigail? I think Mike Amroth. Oh, Mike! Yeah, Mike. He's back. Yeah. He's 100 percent back. He's got a new truck. Have you seen his truck? You told me about it. Okay. Man, you gotta go see it before yeah. you leave, Mark. He's, we're riding his style now, Mark. Yeah, we're riding his style because his other truck he had, I think, it was a bread truck. It's right now <laughs> it's a bread truck. <laughs> and he just painted it. So now we got legit, we got legit limo oh, truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bulletproof. And, and bulletproof, everything. Got nice ribs, nice seats. Oh man, it's so awesome. <laughs> Wendy and City Limousine provides championship service. Making a reservation is so easy, it's a slam dunk. Let Windy City break the, the full core pressure. <laughs> <laughs> of traffic and get you to your destination and style it on time. Contact them 847 916 9300. That's 847 916 9300. Or go to windycitylimos.com and ask for Mike Amaroff. There you go. Mike will be in the. He won't be in a bread order. truck, but he'll be in his, he'll be in his, his nice. Nice truck. I mean, hey, we hey, people, the, the girls be whistling. Yeah. We be riding by, they be whistling. I was like, oh, Mike, Mike, baby. Is that where we're going on Friday? Where? Is Mike driving us Friday? Mike is driving us on Friday. We're going to a concert. Uh, America, I'm taking, I'm taking him to a Chris Brown concert. Oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. yeah. That's yeah. what I'm watching this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we might be coming back critiquing the Chris Brown concert. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're taking, he's coming to the United Center. Uh, Friday and Saturday, so we're gonna check him out. And uh, whispers, whispers. Uh, he'd never seen him. He didn't even know who he was. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna bring him, give him a little culture. Bring him over there, let him check it out. Cisco, I forgot to ask you. Did you press record on the show? Oh, good. Oh, wow. Like, wow, <laughs> Frisco. You see how they think of you, Frisco? I didn't even think about it, Frisco. I said, Frisco, know what he's doing, man. He's I see God. those red lights on the panel, so that, that's always a good sign. Yeah, we D, hope you enjoy hey, the D, D put like you know D put it in really basic form yeah. like push this button, push that button. <laughs> well, doesn't green mean go? <laughs> yeah, green means go. It's like that phone you used to give your kids when they were too young to have a phone, and they just had colors: red, green, yellow, green. Hey, we, we just got a text from D. The, the oh, what did he say? Great show, everyone. Still here at the hospital. Wait a minute. We don't want to <laughs> drop any dimes here. <laughs> show will be up tomorrow midday. So if you. Enjoyed it so much. You want to hear it again? D's okay. D's there's okay. Some, some testing. Going yeah, on. he's he's doing okay. Uh, he's got a baby coming, so just a little procedure. And uh, we want to send a quick, uh, quick shout out to him. Missed him out here today, but he will be back next week. And I want to thank Cisco for doing great work as always. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Make sure you tell all your friends. Oh, before we go, special shout out to my friend Daryl over at the Bloomingdale Costco. He stopped me in line. He goes, "Hey." I love the I love the podcast. He goes, you guys are hilarious. I, I love the oh, show. Oh, Daryl. Yeah. All Loyal right. listener. 
So we always appreciate people that enjoy the show and uh, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Make and sure, sure to you like, know, and like and subscribe. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Help the show grow, baby, because we are going slow. Play through the speakers at Costco. That's right. Oh, wow. At Costco, man, listen, I, I, go there, I go there for lunch just for the free sample. Costco's great. And and Daryl, you know, came up to me. I'm like, what did I do? I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Mark said, here's my wallet. Here's my phone. Here's my bank account. Because Daryl, Daryl, was Daryl a brother? Yes. Oh, see, see. Mark, Mark, Mark was like, Mark's like, Mark's like, Mark's like, what's going on? Oh, Costco's yeah. got some sales over here. Here comes Daryl. Oh, hey, man. Here, here's my wallet. Here's my keys to my car. Wait, you want, wait, wait a minute. I'll tell you my address. Hurt yours. Like, I don't want any trouble, man. Here, I don't want any trouble, man. I do 75 inch. Just take it. <laughs> No, it wasn't like that at all, America. It wasn't like that at all. <laughs> Daryl came up Darryl. nice and friendly. It was all good, and he had nothing but nice all things fun, to say Darryl. about the show. So we appreciate you watching and listening, and a brand-new show coming your way again next week as the NBA Finals finally get finally. underway. We have some actual basketball to talk about and our review on Clipped. That'll be fun. Yeah, Clipped. All right. And I guarantee <laughs> we'll be back next week. And he's got the Mavericks. Don't let him change, Mitch. Uh, no, I'm not changing. I'm, I'm Mavericks all the way. America. Trust me, they're going to win this, all right? Drive home safely, America. Beep, beep. Oh, my goodness. It's only preseason, but I'm high-peeled. Fuck. Jimmy, Jimmy.